Welcome to Marco Martin's Monday Moanings, where I moan on a Monday. You might notice I've got a green screen behind me with beautiful Cape Town in the background. Except it's not a green screen, I'm actually in Cape Town. And what I hate about Cape Town, especially on a Monday morning, is that Cape Town's this fantastic, wonderful place. But everywhere in the world is fantastic and wonderful if you have lots and lots and lots of money. But if you move to Cape Town with an average amount of money, you live in a horrible place outside of the city and then you have to drive in hours and hours of traffic into the city because everyone wants to live in Cape Town. And that's the whole logic. Cape Town's the best city in the world. You know, it's got the best weather, the best beautiful views, whatever. And all of that is true. But the people suck and you have to sit in traffic and you live in a shitty apartment. So you have to be rich to enjoy it and you're going to enjoy something anywhere in the world if you're rich. And one of the things about people in Cape Town is that they're super flaky and they lie a lot. It's like, oh, hey, we should do something on Saturday night. And then they'll message you Sunday late afternoon and apologize with some sort of lame apology. And I suppose women deal with this all the time because when men are caught in a lie, first of all, this is my favorite thing in the world, men lying. It's the spice of life. Like if you watch the new Dune movie, the spice is super valuable. If you could package men's lies, it would be worth fighting wars over like the spice in Dune. To the soundtrack of Hans Zimmer. <laughs> it's just so entertaining. If a man is caught in a lie, your girlfriend comes home and she finds a blonde hair across your duvet. And she's like, oh, whose is this? And then out comes the lie. You're caught in that moment and you've got to lie. <laughs> oh, you've got to lie. And you're so bad at it. <laughs> that, that's what makes it so funny and brilliant is that you're so bad because you're, you're caught out. You're caught in the moment. You didn't have time to prepare the lie. Prepare your lies in advance so that you don't say exactly this. A man who's caught with a hair on his duvet is going to say, Oh, what's that? Is it not one of yours? No, this is not my hair, is the reply. Oh, you know what must have happened? Is a sparrow was making a nest on my windowsill. And that nest was abandoned because the sparrow doesn't like the views of this mountain here behind me. And then it abandoned its nest. And then the wind must have blown just the single hair from the abandoned nest through onto my duvet. And that's how it got you. That's how the hair... <laughs> I love that story. And that's all men's lies. That mixed with a lot of, um, you know what must have happened? Um, um, don't um in your lies. Be confident. Make up your story fast. Whatever comes to mind, no wrong answers. That is the way to lie. And that is the spice of life. If we could package that and sell it, we'd all be millionaires and then we wouldn't have to drive into the city of Cape Town. You could just be there already. Yeah, I mean, don't lie. Don't lie. No matter what women do to us, all the horrible things that a woman have done to us over the years, like making sure that Timu is a thing. Timu. Timu is this new Chinese-based shopping app, online shopping app. And if online shopping were a house party, we would have all been having a great time with Superbulous then take a lot, Amazon joining on a Zoom call, all having a blast, everyone's really polite to each other, just having fun. And then Sheen came and knocked on the door and woman let in Sheen like a vampire. Once it's in, it's in. And then Sheen, as lovely as Sheen might be, ladies, invited Timu. Sheen went up to you and you thought, oh my God, I can't believe something as amazing as Sheen exists at the price that it does. You're so excited. It's like Channing Tatum, but he actually likes you and you have a chance. And you invited Sheen in and you were so happy and so excited. And then Sheen was like, can I bring my friend? And you were just like, uh, yeah, okay. Because you like Sheen so much, don't you? Now Timu's here. And Timu is a crackhead who's coming to your party drunk. He's going to destroy everything and place cameras in your house and sell the data to China. And that's what's happening on your phone when you download the Timu app. 
And who even does that? I got ads for Timu and it's a full size frying pan iPhone case. How much have you have to have given up on life to purchase a full size frying pan iPhone case from Timu and have them track your data? And men's underwear. The only people who buy the men's underwear in those ads from Timu are people who wear gimp suits. That's what you wear underneath a gimp suit. Don't download Timu. Don't download Timu. Let's get rid of it. Let's get our house party back in order. Let's get rid of Sheen while we're at it. We don't want any more of this, ladies. This is your scolding. It's enough. I remember when I was a, a teenager growing up, one of the biggest things about flirting with a girl would be playing footsie underneath the table. Just a little bit of footsie, just a little drag of a foot up your leg. Ooh, so smooth, so sexy, baby. Play footsie with me. And now, I think I'm that guy. I'm not saying that all guys don't like footsie anymore and that it's not cool anymore. I'm that guy who, like, if someone starts playing footsie with me, I'm just paranoid about my sneakers getting dirty. Like, imagine you're sitting there and it's like there's a foot coming up. It's like, don't touch my shoe. Don't. She can be a 10. She can be a 10. And it'll be like, bro, shoes. What's up? Don't, don't touch my shoes. Sneakers are so expensive. It makes sense, actually. I got a pair of white Stan Smiths, baby. I don't even know who Stan Smith is. Was a tennis player. Who cares? Cool shoe. Cool shoe. <laughs> like, there's a 10 across the table from you talking. Oh, all flirty. And there comes a foot and you're like, whoa, send me a text. Send some nudes. I don't know. What do people do these days? <laughs> uh, don't play footsie anymore. Mm. And this reminds me because it's like you think back to those teenage years and it's like there's no better feeling than that anticipation of flirtiness. Do I like this person? There's like little butterflies in your stomach. Is she going to play footsie with me? Is she not? There's no greater feeling until you realize you're older. There's so many greater feelings. The thing is, when you're older, there's so many worse feelings that come along with life. You become a cynical bastard and you moan on a Monday. Put it on YouTube. <laughs> but it, it got me thinking. I so regularly see a post on social media with someone saying, there is no greater feeling than. And one I saw this week was, there is no greater feeling than not reacting to someone's bullshit. There's no, gr no greater feeling than not reacting to someone's bullshit. Now, let me just say, you're doing all other things wrong if there's no greater feeling than not reacting to someone's bullshit. It's fine. I'm sure it's very fulfilling and you feel empowered and you feel great about yourself that like, Finally, I don't have to react to this person's bullshit anymore. It doesn't affect me deeply enough for me to say something in retaliation. It's such a great feeling. There is no greater feeling. You're doing other things wrong. You're doing other things wrong. There are so many greater feelings than not reacting to someone's bullshit. I'm Marco Martins. This has been Monday Mornings. Good luck with the rest of your week. <laughs>